Kitchen, so looking to get back on the roll. They're playing really well last week against the Chicago Bears, and they are absolutely rolling on offense for the first time ever. Patrick Mahomes has a really good defense on the other side of the ball. Yeah, his defense has been great. Probably overlooked with how well they played. And if we talk about defense, you think about the Jets, Jason. It seems like if the Jets are going to survive this negativity they're going through right now, it's going to have to be their defense that steps up and leads the way for them. No doubt about it. And that's the way this team is built. It's built up front when a guy like Quentin Williams, his brother behind him, Quincy, C.J. Mosley, that front seven has to really play well. The New York Jets may have the best trio of cornerbacks in the entire NFL, where you have Sauce Gardner on one side, D.J. Reed, and Michael Carter the second on the inside. Those guys can absolutely cover anybody. And what better outfit to go against than a Patrick Mahomes and all of his weapons around you. You're this Jets defense, especially the secondary. You're showing up tonight. You're like, hey, we felt like at the beginning of the season we could be the best. We're going to show everybody on Sunday night football that we can go out there and we can shut this outfit down. Yeah, and there's been so much talk in the AFC about the upcoming Miami Dolphins, Buffalo obviously with a big win against Miami today. I think the Chiefs are still the team saying, hey, don't forget about us. We're the ones that have hosted five straight AFC title games. Yeah, I think they're enjoying this a little bit of going under the radar, letting everybody talk about the other teams and how good they are. And slowly but surely, Patrick Mahomes is getting in the rhythm. He's throwing touchdown passes galore last week. And they're like, hey, when it's all said and done and the time is right, we're always going to be there how we've been the last few years. He's looking for the third straight victory tonight, trying to go to three and one, and looking for something positive to get their record to two and two. We will continue our search for Taylor Swift. Until then, we'll rejoin Scott Grant in our Westwood One studios. All right, keep up the good work, guys. Up next, the new fashion and offense in the AFC East goes into Buffalo to try to wrest the title away. How did it go when the Dolphins took on the Bills? This is NFL Sunday. Bill Veterans helps veterans with PTSD and stress from military service and isolation during the coronavirus. For the next minute, let's take a minute to relieve stress together. We'll do the 478 breathing exercise. First, sit with your back straight. Second, place your tongue against the roof of your mouth behind your front teeth. Now, exhale through your mouth and around your tongue. If this seems awkward, shape your lips like you're whistling. Close your mouth and inhale through your nose for the count of four. One, two, three, four. Hold your breath for the count of seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And exhale completely through your mouth. Make a whoosh sound and count to eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Do this cycle three more times. Learn more at healvets.org. This message is furnished by Help Heal Veterans. The Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council present the story of Cynthia and Ed. My mother was always very active and independent, and she was familiar with her neighborhood. But one day, out of the blue, she stopped at the stop sign for much longer than usual. And uh, she didn't know whether she should go forward or turn or just stay at the stop sign. She wasn't even really sure where she was at. She was very concerned. It was very unsettling for her. It's important for you to talk to someone about it. To do a family in mind. I felt so much better after my son told me, Mom, I don't want you to worry or be afraid. I'll be there for you in the future at home. When something feels different, it could be Alzheimer's. Now is the time to talk. Visit alz.org slash our stories to learn more. A message from the Alzheimer's Association and the Ad Council. Welcome back to NFL Sunday. You didn't have to be a TV network executive or somebody involved in the National Football League in any way to tell us that this was the game of the week. Buffalo against Miami. Dolphins coming in at 3-0 off an epic offensive performance against Denver last week. The Bills, after their stumble on opening night, averaging 37.5 points per game over the course of their last two. Josh Allen, 4-1 in his career against Tua Tungabailoa, and early on, this looked like it was going to be a standard track meet. Buffalo scored first, but the Dolphins right back at it with their newest addition. First, the goal from the Miami Dolphins Radio Network. That's 
how this game started out. Touchdown, touchdown. It was five in a row before all was said and done, but it was more staying power on this day for the Buffalo Bills, who managed to sustain their offense all day long. Two receivers to the right, takes by himself on the left side. Here's the snap, takes the handoff to Murray, throws in the end zone. It's a trifecta for Stephon Diggs. A 13-yard touchdown reception. Dig it, dig it. I'm not going there, Chris. Chris Brown at WGR Sports Radio 550 in Buffalo. Bills win it 48 to 20 as Josh Allen throws four touchdown passes today, runs for a score, and doesn't throw an interception. Three of those touchdown passes to Stephon Diggs as Buffalo improves to three and one on the year. For Miami, two at Sunday by Low had been sacked once over his first three games. They got to him four times today. And even though Devon Achan, the rookie, ended up with more than 100 yards and two scores, Miami falls to three and one. All right, Baltimore going to Cleveland. Remember, Baltimore exists because they left Cleveland, but going in today with Lamar Jackson and company, this looked like it was going to be a heck of a matchup. Cleveland's defense allowing the fewest points and yards per game in the league. Problem is, their quarterback was unavailable today. Sean Watson out with a shoulder injury, and in a lot of ways, this turned into a mismatch with one quarterback orchestrating everything. Lamar in the shotgun. Three receivers bunched to the right. Jackson takes the snap, steps up. Throws it complete. Andrews has it at the 10. Five touchdown Ravens. And with 5.56 left to play in Cleveland, back plays in the barn. Jerry Sandusky, the WBAL, WYYY Ravens Game Day Network. 28 to 3 was the final in this one. Mark Jackson throws two touchdown passes and runs for two scores on the day. As Baltimore just shows that they're a contender every year. They're now 3 and 1 on the season. Dorian Thompson Robinson got the start today. Tough outing for the rookie out of UCLA. 121 yards, no touchdowns. Three interceptions on the afternoon as Cleveland falls to 2 and 2. What's going on with the Cincinnati Bengals? We know that. Going into this game today, Joe Burrow had a passer rating that was better than only Zach Wilson's in the National Football League. And today in Nashville, it didn't get any better. In fact, the better passer on the field today might have been Derek Henry. Tannehill under center. The fullback is Simmons. Now Tannehill goes in motion to the right. Simmons is offset. Rolling. Tennessee wins in a blowout today, 27 to 3. Brian Tannehill throws for a touchdown of the day. Derrick Henry throws for his third touchdown pass of his career. And also, by the way, runs for 122 yards as Tennessee improves to 2 and 2. For Joe Burrow, 20 for 30, 165 yards, no touchdowns, lost a fumble, and also lost T. Higgins in this game with a rib injury. Look out. Cincinnati is now 1 and 3 on the year. The Houston Texans are turning out to be one of the interesting stories of the early season. And among the rookie quarterbacks, C.J. Stroud is the guy who is taking most of the accolades. Right now, he deserves them. C.J. gets the snap. C.J. throwing downfield and caught by Nico, 25-20. That's a double 15, 10, 5. Rock and roll. Touchdown, Houston. C.J. Stroud with more bird down magic to the end zone. Mark Vanderick, Texans Radio and Sports Radio 610 in Houston. Stroud throws for 306 yards against the Steelers today and a couple of touchdowns. First rookie since the merger with 250 passing yards, two passing touchdowns, and no interceptions in three straight games. Houston blows out the Steelers today, 30-6. to And to add insult to injury or injury to insult, Kenny Pickett left this game with a knee injury after throwing for just 114 yards. Mitch Trubisky cleaned up. Pittsburgh is now 2-2 two two with questions moving forward about the knee injury for their quarterback. And over in London today, we began the international series, the home team. The Jaguars are the home team when they're in London, for the most part, dominating against the Falcons, doing so with offense and defense. This is the ninth play of the drive for the Falcons. Ritter, with the pistol back behind him, takes a snap, quick throw right side, intercepts it, Darius Williams, up to left, number 50, to the 40, he needs one block, he's got him at the 20, he's at the 10, he's all the way in! Touchdown, Jaguars! J.P. Shadrick with the call right here on Westwood One as Jackson
Jacksonville wins it 23 to 7. Darius Williams a 61 yard pick six in the ball game. Not a lot from Trevor Lawrence, but he didn't need to do too much. He threw a touchdown pass to Calvin Ridley, the former Falcon. The Jags improved their record to two and two. They'll stay in London for their game next week with the Buffalo Bills. Meanwhile, Desmond Ritter, 191 yards, a touchdown, but threw two interceptions. Big day for B. John Robinson, but not enough for Atlanta. They are now two and two as well. Catch it all this season with NFL Plus. NFL Plus brings you live games on mobile, NFL Red Zone, NFL Network, game replays, and more all in one place. Sign up today at plus.nfl.com. Terms and conditions apply. Just to have more scores and highlights, you're listening to NFL Sunday on Westwood One. The power's out of our house. Coffee table. But since our family has storm-ready Wi-Fi from Xfinity, we can stream or game in the dark. Oh, who moved the couch? So that's what we're doing right now, in fact, is I try and feel around for a seat. Ah, here we go. Oh, cactus? Can I get a little help over here? Yeah, bro, just let me finish this boss battle. Sure, go ahead. Medic! Now you can get fast, reliable internet on the Xfinity 10G network and add store-ready Wi-Fi so you can stay connected through power outages only from Xfinity. Plus, you can save up to $300 over Verizon. Learn more today. Go to Xfinity.com, call 1-800-XFINITY, or visit a store today. Restrictions apply. Store-ready Wi-Fi limited to customers within range of 4G LTE cellular signal. Speeds reduce to 30-7 megabits per second. Actual speeds vary. For more details, visit Xfinity.com slash store-ready. Here's Xfinity Connect more to Verizon 5G home plan. Hello, I'm Greg Figueroa. And I'm David Figueroa. Over 30 years ago, my brother Greg and I set out on a mission to offer the world a better hot sauce. That's right, David. We made Melinda's thicker, hotter, and better than ordinary hot sauces. And now we have 32 exciting and delicious sauces that hot sauce fans are obsessed with, like our ghost pepper sauce, our Thai sweet chili, and our best-selling black truffle hot sauce. Melinda's also has five spicy ketchups made with real sugar and no added junk like high fructose corn syrup. People ask David and I, what makes Melinda so good? That's easy. We think like chefs do. Instead of burning someone with hot peppers and vinegar, we use fresh plant-based ingredients and the finest chili peppers perfectly blended to set your mouth on flavor. Go to melindas.com to find our line of craft condiments at Walmart and other fine retailers. And right now, get a 10-pack of our best-selling sauces with free shipping at melindas.com. That's M-E-L-I-N-D-A-S.com. Melindas.com. Sports Radio 94 WIP. Jake Elliott has never missed in a game-winning situation in the fourth quarter or overtime. He was win at 34 to 31 in the final. Jalen Hurts throws a couple of touchdowns. Big day for AJ Brown. Sam Howell 290 yards in that late score on the day. Only now 4 and 0. Washington is 2 and 2. How about Tampa Bay going to New Orleans today against an offensively challenged Saints team that was getting Alvin Kamara back today? Tampa Bay though just held to 174 yards last week against the Eagles. They didn't get a ton of offense today, but Baker Mayfield got them enough. Third down and goal from the five. Dropping Baker Mayfield, looking to his left, now back to his right, looking over the middle. Nowhere to throw. Flushed out of pocket, throws toward the end zone. It's a diving catch right at the goal line. It's going to be a touchdown, Tampa Bay. Touchdown, Tampa Bay. And Devin Tompkins has the catch right at the goal line. That's Sheen Decker off of the Buccaneers Radio Network. Tampa wins it today 26-9. The final, Mayfield throws three touchdown passes. He did throw an interception on the day, and he also lost Mike Evans to a hamstring injury during this ball game. But Chris Godwin came up big, and so did Tampa Bay, now 3-1 on the year. Derek Carr, just 127 yards. Alvin Kamara in his return, 84 total yards, but New Orleans is now 2-2. Two and two. Right, Minnesota was up against it today, going into Carolina. Both teams 0-3. Only team in NFL history to start 0-4 and reach the playoffs was the 92 Chargers. Both these teams knew they were probably playing for their playoff lives. And for Minnesota, lots of different things going on in this one, but it didn't start well for the Vikings. The snap, Cousins looking left, throwing left, and that's intercepted. Picked off by the Panthers, going all the way down the sideline. He's got one man to beat, it's Franklin. He's got to beat the quarterback. Franklin stops, gets a block, pick six, Carolina, Sam! Take it back! 99 yards, the longest in Panther history. And he's dropped with the call on the Carolina Panthers radio network. But as they say, one good return deserves another. And the next return put Minnesota on top. Nice job. Casey, blitzing Harrison Smith in the ball. Now, come on, picked up by DJ Wadham. Touchdown, Inside the 10.
Pete Bursich on the KFAN Minnesota Vikings radio network. That turned out to be the play to put Minnesota in the lead for good in this game. They win it by a score of 21 to 13. Kirk Cousins, kind of a modest day, just 139 yards, but two touchdown passes to Justin Jefferson, and Minnesota gets into the win column for the first time this year. Bryce Young returning back to play once again after the injury kept him out last week. 204 yards, didn't throw a touchdown, did lose a fumble in this game. That was the big one. Adam Thielen playing against his old team. Seven catches, 76 yards. The Carolinas now 0-4. The Rams, well, they ran out big today against Indianapolis. Matthew Stafford and company thought they might have had the possibility of an easy win, but Anthony Richardson, who missed last week in concussion protocol, brought his team back. And when I mean back, I mean way back from a 23 to nothing deficit in the third quarter. Richardson out of the gun. Trey Sermon motions out wide to the right side. Richardson throws it upfield. Caught by Andrew Ogletree. He's in. Touchdown. I-N-G-Y. Touchdown. Touchdown. Touchdown.